Hi, welcome to Unplugged with Geraldo and Darren. And before we get started, Darren, you know, I was I was looking at the news the other day, and mm -hmm. there was another store closing. You know, the Gap, I think it was closing. Yeah, 60 Sears. or 90 stores or something. What is going on? Why are these stores closing? And the question is, what is that doing to us? I mean, we can't go shopping anymore. There's no more you know, stores to go to. What, well, I mean, you on? could do online shopping like my <laughs> dad course, loves yes, to do. We could. <laughs> I actually don't even online shop because I actually like going into brick and I do, orders. too. I do. But you're right. Like, buying something with three clicks is really going right? to change your whole perception of, like, like exactly. being common courtesy yes, and having knowing to look people in the eye and well, shake their the hand, thing, right? right? People don't get to communicate with one another anymore. That's the beauty of it, right? right. You go to the mall, you communicate with people. You feels like you can spend your whole life in your apartment and never have to interact with everyone exactly. and get everything the benefit Absolutely. of that. Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah, I took my son the other day. Yeah. He's like, he's confused. Like, I have to purchase this. I just do it online. I said, why do they have a store? Good point. But this is happening. But it's like, horrible. This is how society <laughs> has been built. You need to wait online. No, I agree. I mean, listen, I think that you have to do extra effort now right. to kind of interact with people you know even if it's just on online forums yeah. and understanding taking walks every day just helps and making right. sure that you say hi to people just well, it helps all right good all right guys we have a lot to cover today so we better get started joining us later on the show we have the author of the tequila diet that sounds very interesting right yeah <laughs> and we have a woman who will inspire each of us to never give up on our goals plus the famous chef cedric is here to show us how to make a delicious and decadent spring dessert. But first, we have board-certified radiation oncologist Dr. Robert Den, who specializes in the treatment of prostate cancer at Philadelphia University and Thomas Jefferson University. Thank you so much for Dr. being Den, here. Thank We're you for being here. So thank excited to talk to you. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. Okay, so walk me through space. Or, which stands for organ at risk, right? That's right. I'm learning You're today. You're learning. I'm, I'm basically an MD. I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean you got your degree. You, you got your degree. Right. So tell us about it. Yeah. So let me take you a step back and just talk a little bit about radiation. Okay. So if we look at the history of radiation, we found really early on that it was an extremely effective treatment for cancer. Right. But one of the problems we found is that, it, in addition, it affected normal tissues. Okay. Right. So we've had a lot of advances in the field with technology to be able to actually deliver more radiation targeting the cancer and avoiding normal tissues like the rectum or the, pro or the bladder in, in case Correct. of prostate cancer. So what the space or actually does is it physically creates a space between the prostate and the rectum, essentially shielding it from some of the radiation dose. Like a barrier, right? So, yeah. Exactly. So what you're able to do is actually deliver a very high dose to kill the cancer cells in the prostate, but because all of a sudden you created a space, you have less dose now going to the rectum. Right, because what's, what's happening right now, people are getting treated for their, for their prostate, right? right? With the radiation, but it's also affecting their rectum, which could cause other issues, correct? Exactly, because if you think about it, we can't control the filling or emptying of our rectum. Right. So this means that as a radiation oncologist, in order to make sure you're definitely treating all of the cancer, you need to put margin around your area to make sure that you're completely covering the cancer. Okay. And so what that means is that some of the rectum will naturally be in the field of radiation. Hmm. So in order to reduce this risk, you can actually now insert this gel uh, seamlessly to s actually create a space between the rectum and the prostate okay. and really allows us to deliver an effective dose whereas minimizing toxicities and like side effects. So Geraldo, you asked me about what some of those could be. Right. So loose stool, diarrhea can affect our patients while they're getting treatment. Right. Some patients note that they may have some more serious effects later on, mm -hmm. like bleeding from the rectum. Okay. And this can be really worrisome and troubling to patients. Of course. Right. And so, and so when do you, when would you start doing it? I mean, do you have to be diagnosed with prostate cancer first? It could be preventative, like how? So that's an excellent question. So the space or itself is not actually part of the treatment for prostate cancer, but what it really does is prevents the side effects from happening from the treatment. So you would never want to do this on, unless a patient has a diagnosis of prostate cancer. Okay. And we use it in conjunction with radiation therapy, which is really the treatment that we're doing to cure the patient of their disease. And so what we essentially do is we're able to take two liquids, and when they combine, they actually form a gel. So we can inject them simultaneously into a space between the prostate and rectum, right. and it creates a physical space, a physical distancing between the prostate and the rectum. Wow. So when this, was it approved by the FDA? It or has not? been approved by the FDA, yes. How long has it been approved? It's been approved for about two years now. It actually was one of the few um, 
medical devices that actually went through a clinical trial. Oh, wow. So they took patients and randomized them between okay. getting the space or and not getting the space or and asked patients, do you have, what are your rectal symptoms? What right. are your different symptoms? And what they found is that there was a significant reduction in symptoms from patients and it reduced the toxicity that our patients see. Okay. So a lot of us in the field are now are using this to help us uh, bring our quality of care to an even higher level. Okay. Before we go, is it covered by Medicare? It is covered by Medicare and a lot of private wow. insurers. That's amazing. How wow. can people learn more about it? So you can go online and look at the websites. You can ask your doctor directly about it as well. Dr. Den, it's been a wow, pleasure thank having you on the show. Thank you so, so much. much. This is really great. appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, of course. Still to come, we have a naturopath, Carrie Pittman. She's the author of The Tequila Diet. We will not only discuss her new book, but also what Mayan medicine can teach modern healthcare providers. Stay with us as we'll be right back. Welcome back. Joining us via Skype from Los Angeles is naturopath Terry Pittman. She is the author of the soon to be released book, The Tequila Diet, and she specializes in energetic and holistic healing services. All right, let's begin. I must say, I love the title of your book. Who doesn't love that title? <laughs> and I can't wait to hear about more about balancing your energy. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Of course. I gotta ask. Please tell me the tequila diet is just drinking four times a day for tequila. <laughs> Please. Do you know how many people ask me that? Oh, come on. <laughs> I keep it that easy. Yeah. So tell us about the diet. Walk then. us through Obviously it. Obviously, it has tequila in it, so. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so my book is called The Tequila Diet, and it's really based upon some secrets of the ancient Mayans, mm -hmm. because you may know or you may not, they were one of the first to develop uh, tequila. In right. fact, they called it pulque. And so there's a lot of health benefits we're finding for this agave plant that tequila and ancient tequila was made from. But also bridging that with some really spectacular healing strategies that the Mayans used, how they ate, how they moved, how they expanded their minds. Um, it's all integrated into the tequila diet. And it's, it's a diet about celebrating life. Mm. How is it different than other diets that are kind of right. out there right now, maybe keto or paleo, things that are very zeitgeisty? Right. Great question. Well, first of all, I like to say that my diet includes celebration, which is something that a lot of diets are about, you know, taking foods out or, or right. not allowing a little alcohol here and there. Um, and it's, it's different in that it is low carb during the week, but I allow for some celebration uh, and carb cycling, if you will, on the weekends or maybe just on a Sunday brunch, depending on what your weight loss goals are. But so it's kind of a bridge, if you will, between paleo, keto, um, ancient Mayan secrets, and then carb cycling. So how, how did you come up with the name Tequila Diet or how did you come up with the writing a book about it then? Great question. So I've been doing this quite a while working with uh, patients and, and one of the things I was finding is that they would come and they would almost ashamedly admit that they drank alcohol um, and, <laughs> you know, just not really educated about um, one, that there are benefits to drinking moderate amounts of alcohol, but two, you know, which alcohol choice is perhaps the best. Um, and so in looking at that, I have found that Tequila is a very clean alcohol, easier for the body to process. And then there's some interesting studies too about the agave inulin that, um, that comes from the agave plant from tequila that has been shown to help with weight loss, with balancing blood sugar, lowering cholesterol, need I say more. So it's really exciting that you could actually have a little bit of alcohol and moderation is important but um, in a healthy lifestyle that you don't have to, you know, feel like you're living with neglect and, and um, feel like you're following so many rules. And I know I've done the keto myself um, and it sometimes it gets to be really difficult to eat out and, and to know what to eat each day. And then after a while for myself, uh, I, I felt like I needed some carbs. So the carb cycling is kind of, it's, it's, a way to have your cake and eat it too, if you will. <laughs> yeah, or drink it too, depending on. Uh, exactly. Does it does it matter if it's uh, brown tequila or clear tequila? Okay, so for me, I like the clear tequila, which we call blanco or silver, and that's because it doesn't have the congeners that you know that make tequila darker, like a reposado or añejo. 
Got it. Um, but really, all of the tequilas have some the same properties. It's just that if you're going to have more than one, which sometimes happens, it might be a good idea to do the clear Blanco tequila. So we're almost out of time. Can you just give us a tip from the Mayans, really a something that we could all use from them since they were such a great civilization? Yes. So they were so brilliant, right? They developed calendars that are more accurate than some calendars today. They developed the concept of zero, mm -hmm. which we wouldn't have computers without that. Um, so how can we be as brilliant and creative? A couple things. Meditation. Uh, that has been shown in thousands of studies to help balance the brain, to help us to uh, have better memory and mental clarity. Um, another really easy thing, skip breakfast, which may sound counterintuitive, but they often waited till 11 o'clock to eat for the All first right. time of the day. And that's also a part of my diet plan. Well, thank you and so then, much. We're on, unfortunately, we're out of thank time. You, but thank you so much for being on the show. Take care now. You're thank amazing. You. Cheers. You're welcome. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> when we return, we have Chef Cedric Barbaret here to make some amazing desserts. I cannot wait for this. We'll be right back. Wow, this looks incredible. Joining us is Chef Cedric Barberet, owner of Bistro Barberet and Bakery in Lancaster. And before we get started, we want to congratulate uh, you for being on voting one of the top 10 best pastry chefs in America by Dessert Professional. Wow, that is truly decadent. Thank you, Thank you so much for Thank being here. What an yeah. honor, Thank you for man. A pleasure. What Thank an honor. Much. So where can I start eating? Can I start on this side? Wait, <laughs> one side to the other. These don't even look edible. They look like too perfect to be edible. Yeah, a little piece of chocolate, you know, very decadent, and uh, they, uh, they, and everything is handmade. So wow. chocolate, uh, Grand Marnier, passion, raspberry, hibiscus, mint, coffee. That so, so the coffee ones are they filled like with coffee beans? What are they filled? It's a, with? it's a true coffee, a roasted coffee beans, and uh, it's uh, infused in the uh, ganache. How long does it take to make like one of those? Base? I mean, obviously, you make multiple ones. Right. Yeah, multiple. Uh, I guess. Uh, in one day, you can do a, a round of five, six hundred by hand very quickly. Wow. That's well, amazing. I could do 800 by hand, so I, clearly I can put you have 800 by now. By hand. Yeah. <laughs> Let's gosh. go to this side over there because I'm ready to jump over and eat one of these over here. So tell us what we have over here. Yeah. Well, here is a, a little selection of uh, what we do in the, in our showcase, about 25 different items. Okay. Some of them are gluten-free, like the two front one are gluten-free items. Wow. Since people are very uh, gluten-free oriented. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And uh, yeah. we have a vanilla creme brulee and a milk chocolate mousse, seven uh -huh. layer. It's a seven right. layer of dark chocolate, 75 percent. Fruit tart, cheesecake. Um, we'll do a, a portable uh, to-go cup of uh, trio chocolate almond crumble oh, so on the road. That's a portable. Yeah, you grab it and you eat it on the go. Oh, on the go. It's, you uh, perfected <laughs> dessert, man. Yeah. I can eat it on the go now? Okay. Uh, you know the fruit, uh, if people like My fruits, God, like a mango, amazing. coconut, and guava. It's a gluten-free as well. Or banana crunch, opera, traditional, or eclairs. Wow. Mm -hmm. So are we chef, making stuff today? Yeah, yeah I we hope are. so. I'm Hi. ready. Go, oh, go ahead. I mean, yeah. Tell us about your bistro a little bit while we yeah. start well, the process Well, the bistro here. is uh, behind the bakery on the first floor of a uh, location. So okay. we're in downtown Lancaster. Okay. And uh, it's a traditional French bistro, kind of what used to be Brasserie Perrier. Right. A uh, little classical twist with uh, some modern uh, accent in, uh, in what we do in the French. Oh, perfect. Perfect. So what are we going to be doing today? Well, today yeah. we're going to do the uh, raspberry macaron. Oh, Another the raspberry gluten free macarons. Items. This looks daunting to <laughs> and, uh, me. We are going to do it with a yogurt cream. Okay. That we are going to do, and then fresh raspberry, and we're going to finish it with a little bit of buttercream and a rose petal. Oh my God, anyway. Let, I can't wait. Let's get so going. <laughs> here's, what we do is we're going to put the uh, yogurt in the bottom. Okay. So, very, so that goes in first. Yes. Gotcha. And then we'll put the sugar in it. Which oh, is a must. A, yes, of course. We need to have sugar. That's a dessert Very must. Important. And then we're going to mix it. You're going to mix it up. Now, in, in baking, you know, if you miss a pinch of salt here and there, you can kind of add it. But yeah. in, in sugar, you need to scale everything or perfectly. you have a That's surprise. Right. Oh, uh, I don't want a surprise. I want <laughs> delicious. <laughs> I don't want a surprise. Yeah, right. I, 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 At the end, we have some uh, liquefied gelatin uh, with cream. Liquefied that we're, gelatin. Yeah, wow. so we're going to put it inside. And then once it's done, we're going to mix it. Wow. And oh when God. it's mixed, yeah. we have a perfect cream right now. And before it kind of sees, we're going to add the whipped cream. Whipped cream. That's a lot of cream. It's all about dairy. Key ingredient. <laughs> yeah. That's a key ingredient. It's very low fat. 
You know? So, Chef, I understand that you uh, worked wow. at some famous place that we, maybe our viewers would like to know a little bit more about. Can you uh, indulge us in... Uh, it's a very beautiful name. Right, right? Yeah, it's called Mar-a-Lago, Mar I've heard uh, of that. <laughs> I've heard of that too, I think. So, yeah. it's a place in Florida, apparently. Uh, yeah. Somewhere in Palm Beach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It seems like the guests right now in Palm Beach are not very happy because not the very traffic happy. is in a jam. <laughs> well, that, that. Okay, wait, well, I so got That it. must have been an experience. So, you're putting that, that's the... Just yoga cream. Here, right? All right, just and a then, dollop, yeah. okay. And then we'll get the fresh raspberry that we're going to My put favorite. right in. Hmm. Um, what is your favorite pastry? Uh, I like stuff with fruit, so uh, the winter is not the great time for it. Okay. But uh, if you uh, get into the summer in Lancaster, it's all about, um, how do you call that? Uh, fresh fruits. Yeah. Fresh and fruit, it's right? straight from the I market. Love, I love that. So it's awesome. You Have know? you ever made a mistake? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> sometime. I just wanted to see He's if you were going to admit it. it. So, and this what is, is from rose? A, yeah, it's actually a, fresh, a, pet, a rose yeah, petal. Rose petal, edible, and then we'll do it. It's edible? Yes. Whoa. It's an edible Look rose petal? I don't think so, I've ever eaten a rose petal We have petal the best before. job in the world. <laughs> <And> <laughs> and then, ours are and then we'll put a little bee. And then, wow, so look So we'll put it like this. That. And then oh should be a, a little more decadent, we can put a nice little 24 carat. 24 uh, carat. Well, of course. Of gold, you, know? you know, you wow. can't have dessert without That's because I've been working at Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> everything is gold over of there. Of course think, everything you know? is gold at Mar-a-Lago. So, uh, Would you like to try? Well, okay. let's do it. Yeah, All real right, quick. Let's, 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 let's do it. Let's do it. I'll do it real quick. It. This is the uh, yogurt cream okay. that you put in the center. Hey, put you this can, one too. Okay. There you go. Oh, two well, Raldo's making me do it for um, him. Yeah. So if I make a mistake, I'll, I'll put, I'll put the raspberries on. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, you put the raspberries on. Okay, Here we so go. We and this. just put them around. Now, can you can you cook as well, or are you just mostly desserts? Uh, I can cook, but I'm not great at it. So we have a very uh, good uh, chef de cuisine at the restaurant uh, that take care of all uh, our savory stuff in the restaurant. Awesome. Can we just put this on top, yeah. right? All right, All Chef, right. listen, we are out of time. Thank I'm you impressed so much with for myself, being right? here. Thank I'm going to eat this as soon as we're done. Yeah. Pleasure to have Thank you Thank you very on. much. All Thank the best you. to you Thank and you yours. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow. I'm so All right, guys, stick around. After the break, we have an amazing inspirational guest to discuss how you can accomplish your goals in spite of adversity. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Joining us via Skype from Dublin is Kirsty Ennis. Kirsty served as a door gunner and helicopter mechanic in the U.S. Marine Corps. When her aircraft crashed during combat operations in Afghanistan, Kirsty was critically injured. In addition to her left leg amputation, she sustained facial trauma and spinal and brain injuries. Wow. After recovery, Kirsty became dedicated to exceeding expectations. She works as a stunt woman in major motion pictures as a veteran's advocate and as an adaptive extreme athlete. She has climbed Mount Everest. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. I've never felt so terrible about myself in my entire life, Kirstie. <laughs> you don't need to feel terrible. <laughs> and, and you're 28, so this is just killing me right now. Of everything that you've done, you are so accomplished. Tell us a little bit how you got involved in the Marines and, and what, what started that. Yeah, um, so I was, I've always said that I'm one of the lucky ones. Um, I was raised by two Marine parents. You know, I absolutely adored them. You know, every morning they got up, put the uniform on, um, and, and I just looked up to them like, like as my superheroes. You know, they put the cape on um, every day, and I wanted to give them a reason to be proud of me like I was proud of them. And, yeah, just a few short months after my 17th birthday, I decided that I was going to join the Marine Corps like them. Was the Marines your first choice? Did you have any uh, reservations about joining the Marines or some, it was just a do or dare type of thing? What yeah. was it? <laughs> no, I just knew I was always going to do it. Um, you know, like I said, I don't even know if my parents would let me join another branch, really. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I just grew up watching them and adoring what they did. And um, I knew from a very young age that I was going to do it. You know, my, my Barbie dolls wore dress blues for crying out loud, and my favorite movie was a movie on Marine Corps boot camp. Um, so I just knew deep down that that's where my heart was, and I was going to bleed green one day. I mean, if you just were a Marine, that would be successful enough. But no, on top of that, you got to be a mountain climber at Seven Summits. Tell me about that. What is Seven Summits, and uh, what have you accomplished so far, and what are you looking to do? Yeah, so the Seven Summits is the highest peak on each of the seven continents. Um, 
during my recovery, I guess how I got through it all was really just by turning to the outdoors. And initially it was from, it was basically adapted snowboarding. And I competed alongside, alongside Team USA for a while and decided that a medal wasn't enough. Um, so I turned to the mountains in a different way by mountaineering and um, snowboarding some of the biggest mountains in the world. And in 2017, I decided that I was going to attempt to be the first female amputee to ever do the seven summits. And, uh, you know, the best part about all of it is really that I've been doing it for charity. Um, the first one was back in March of 2017, um, Mount Kilimanjaro, the highest point in Africa. And we ended up raising $150,000 for clean water. And really, that was just the start. And that was kind of that defining moment and that I was going to, I was going to keep doing this. Um, now I'm halfway through. Um, I've done four of them and getting ready to gear up for Mount Vincent down in Antarctica and going after Denali um, and as we mentioned Everest. So um, it's a big deal now um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to every second of it. You know, these are sports that nobody can do for me. You know, I have to convince myself to put one foot in front of the other, other and um, ultimately I hope that, you know, there's a, a young lady or even somebody from the next generation that's just watching me and thinking, you know, oh my God, I can do it, you know, better, faster, stronger than Christy. You know, I want this to be a way to redefine what it is to be injured or disabled. Mm. So, Kirsty, uh, take us back to June 23rd, 2012. Uh, yeah, well, June 23rd, 2012 started like any other day, really. Um, any other day in Afghanistan, anyways. Um, it was my second deployment to Afghanistan, and I was just about a month and a half away from going home. And um, I was meaning to go outbound on a mission to do a combat resupply and then to go extract some Marines from a forward operating base called Musakala. And unfortunately, um, we never even made it safely to Fab Nauzad. And the last thing I remember is the nose of the aircraft going down and then pilots making a couple calls saying that the aircraft um, wasn't um, giving the desired outputs that he was making on the sticks. And next thing you know, the nose of the aircraft shot up towards the sky and we rolled left. And just free fell until we hit the ground. Um, I was on left gun that night, and uh, the last thing I remember is just opening my eyes and rolling my tongue around my mouth and choking on grit and feeling a missing jaw and no pain, uh, really just shock. And ultimately, they ended up throwing me into another aircraft that was flying with us, and um, I ended up having a, a hole in the side of my face, like you mentioned. Um, Spinal cord damage, lost my left leg above the knee. Uh, it was pretty hot, actually. And, um, I mean, it was, yeah, it rewrote my entire life. Mm. It stripped a lot from me. I mean, at times, but. <laughs> that's a beyond harrowing tale, I think, for all of us. Um, I wanted to find out about your foundation and, you know, the advice you give to future generations, because you clearly have an incredible story. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. Yeah, um, last year I actually founded uh, Real Original, but the Kirstianis Foundation. And basically what we do is we um, financially support deserving nonprofits and actually provide education opportunity and healing in the outdoors. I know that this stuff works, so I really want to expose this alternative medicine and this recreational therapy to other people who actually need it. Um, and really these climbs that I've been doing have been the means for me to fundraise I mean, raise awareness for what we're doing with the Christina's Foundation's mission. Um, and ultimately I want men, women, and children with or without adversity or disability to watch what I'm doing and just want to use more of their potential to get up off the couch or to set a goal and continue chasing after it. You know, it's really the six inches between our ears and what's behind our rib cage that dictate what we're capable of. And I want people to see that. Once they can see it, they can feel it and they can do it. Mm. Well, Kirsty, we are, unfortunately we're out of time, but I, wow. you know, I've got so many more other questions to ask you. But and, and anyway, thank you for joining us. Thank God you. bless and continue all your hard work. Thank you for your service. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you, Kirsty, for joining us. And thanks again to all of our guests. And thanks to all of you home for watching. And remember, let's continue our conversation on social media. We look forward to hearing from you. Be sure to share with us topics and guests you would like to see on the show. Have a great weekend.
meeting was sponsored by Fitness Training by Araldo Incorporated. Promotional consideration is paid for by 